Hello, and thank you for joining me here in the gymnasium at Solid Rock Day Camp as we bring to a conclusion this journey together, reflecting on the final week of Jesus that would see his life lead up, his work, his ministry lead up into the moment that he would suffer and die on Calvary, on that cross, be buried in a tomb, and then ultimately resurrect in what we celebrate as Easter or Resurrection morning. What does this story mean for you and I today? The life that Jesus lived and is living, and how does it change us today? Uh, that's what we're gonna find out in this final reflection time together. The first image that we're gonna look at, a picture in our resurrection story for today, is linen, linen. And the verse comes from Matthew 27, 59. It says, when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and he laid it in a new tomb which he had hewn out of the rock, and he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. Now, this was Joseph of Arimathea. You'll remember yesterday when we talked about Jesus dying on the cross, that when he was dead, they took him and placed him in a tomb. Well, it wasn't just any tomb. And Joseph of Arimathea was a follower of Jesus and knew that this had happened, and he went to Pilate and, and petitioned. He begged and Pilate, give me the body of Jesus that I may, that I may prepare it and bury it so I can put it to rest. Don't cast him among the, the common dead in a pit, but allow me to take the body and treat it respectfully. And Pilate agreed. And, and so jo Joseph of Arimathea went and got the body and prepared it and covered it in white linen and placed it in his tomb that was meant for him and his family and, and, and closed it. The entrance was closed by a huge stone. Which brings us to the next uh, picture, which is that of a giant stone. And the verse is Matthew 27, 66. And it reads, Pilate said to them, you have a guard, go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. Now see, there were the religious leaders again, the people that you remember on Monday were not happy that Jesus came into the temple and threw out the money changers and allowed those that they th felt weren't good enough to come into the temple, Jesus let them come in and healed them. These were the religious leaders that worked with Judas to see Jesus betrayed and arrested so that they could put him on a false trial and see him crucified. These same religious leaders now come to Pilate again, and they said, look, while Jesus was alive, he, he not only said and did some crazy things, but he also said something about something happening in a certain period of time, like three days. And we're concerned his disciples are going to do something silly, like try to take his body. And then we're going to have, look, Jesus is dead and we want his movement and the things that he stood for to die with him. And to do that, we need something stronger than a stone. We need a guard over that. Pilate is probably thinking to himself, ay, 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 really, guys, he's dead. What, what more of a threat is he? But nevertheless, he agrees, and so he seals the tomb, and it's, it's kind of like a warning sign that says no trespassing, otherwise there's very severe consequences. And he put that seal on the tomb, on that stone, and he placed guards there. Now, a Roman guard was not a, a simple job. It was a life decision, a choice, a career. See, when you were a Roman soldier and you were to guard something, if what you guarded escaped or was tampered with, or in this case, stolen, they would have to pay with their lives. So they took serious the role of guarding whatever it was that they were guarding. So it's the, the readers want us, the writers of the gospels want us to understand, and God wants the world to understand that it was impossible for anything but what he's about to do to take place. It was impossible for his disciples to get in there and to steal the body of Jesus. It was closed, it was sealed, Jesus was dead. But then something happened on Sunday morning, Easter morning, resurrection morning, something happened. Guess what happened? Was the tomb still holding the body of Jesus or was it empty? That's right, it was empty because Jesus is now resurrected. God had raised him from the dead. And we read of this in Matthew chapter 28, verse 25. It says, but the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And they looked and he wasn't laying there anymore. And I love this because in Matthew 28, it says in that morning there was an earthquake and the stone was removed and the angel came and was there, and as the women came searching uh, for, the, for the body of Jesus, for where he was buried, they said, he's not here, for he's risen, just as he said. 
Everything was going, going according to God's plan. Yes, the suffering and the cross was horrific and hard and, and, and a very sad thing to have happened to take place, but it was necessary. And Jesus' death was a part of God's plan. But for you and I, death tends to be the final part of the story. But now with Jesus, the story continued. The story continued. God still had more to the plan than Jesus dying, and it was Jesus' resurrection. And as Jesus would appear to these women and others, he would also appear to his disciples, his 11 disciples now, because Judas is gone. And as he appears to them at the end of Matthew 28, he sends them out into the world to tell everybody about the good news that God has so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And this ties in with the total, this is what the gospel message is. This is the central core truth to our faith that without the resurrection of Jesus, we have no faith. We have no hope. But because Jesus was resurrected, that means that Jesus, who lived a life without sin, dying on the cross without sin, was able to die for sinners, you and I. Jesus did what we could not do. He fixed the relationship between us and God by removing sin. See, it's like if you, the world that God created was perfect, but we broke it with sin like taking something and a hammer and just shattering it and we try to pick the pieces up and we try to put it together and sometimes we we get a little bit of it together and 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 i think we can understand this and moms and dads i think you can understand this too uh, especially how hard it is to try to put pieces together when we break things and it seems like our efforts to make things better make things worse and like picking up pieces of glass we end up cutting ourselves and hurting ourselves trying to put it back together we just can't and see, accepting God's gift of salvation through Jesus is admitting that, God, I can't put these pieces back together. I'm a sinner, and my sin separates me from you. You're holy, and I'm not. You're without sin. I'm with sin, and I can't do anything about it. And Jesus said, I can, and I have done something about it. If you accept my gift of salvation, I will have died for your sins to be removed. My blood washes your sin away from you. My body that was broken for you brings healing to you in the relationship with God. And we can now be a part of God's family forever. That's why God refers to us as his children. No matter how young or old we are, we are all God's children. And there is a family reunion coming because as Jesus resurrected, his disciples were told to go into all the world and that he one day would return and those who had died and those who are still alive will together come to meet Jesus in a family reunion that will never have another goodbye. It will be a world and a time where sin is now removed. There will be no more suffering. There will be no more pain. There'll be no more broken pieces. For all of life will be restored in ways that are more beautiful now than what they were at the beginning. And that's what Jesus offers you and I today. That's what his sacrifice on the cross and the resurrection means for you and I today. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you turn from sin, you repent and say, God, I cannot fix myself. I receive Jesus as my Savior. Forgive me of my sins. And now we have God's heart, Jesus in us through his spirit. We can now live in Jesus' footsteps, and we can do the things that are pleasing to God. And it's not about following rules. It's about a child growing up to be like dad. It's about a child growing up to be like dad. Look, we are God's kids. He's our father and he loves us. He does life with us. He's there through the ups and all the downs that we'll experience in this world, but we're never alone. And so I wanna pray. I wanna again thank you so much for spending this time with me and I pray that this has left a very positive impression of God's love for you. Whether you're a boy or a girl watching or you're a mommy or daddy, God loves you so much. And Jesus is his constant invitation to come to know his healing, his grace, and his love. Would you pray with me one last time? 
Father, our God, as we come before you, we thank you so much, God, for who you are. Thank you that you loved us, that while we were yet dead in our sin, you sent your son to die for us. You lavished your love upon us. For the scripture says, what greater love can one have than when he's willing to lay his life down for a friend? Father, you laid your life down for humanity through your only begotten Son, that whoever will believe on him will not perish but have everlasting life. Father, I pray for every boy and girl and mom and dad watching that there would be an invitation, Father, and, and, and a desire in our hearts to receive your forgiveness through Christ. If you're praying with me and this is your heart's desire, I want to encourage you to ask Jesus to come in and heal you, to forgive you, and to make your heart new in washing away your sin so you can be God's child thanking him for the opportunity to be a part of his family and taking the, the task to go and to tell others that there's still room for more in God's family, to tell everyone the good news that God has so loved the world that he has given his only begotten son that whoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Father, thank you for this week. Thank you for Solid Rock Day Camp. Thank you for all the boys and girls and moms and dads who have uh, taken this journey with us, and I pray your blessing on us, Father. We pray for uh, the um, quarantine, Lord, and the season that's upon us. Just bring your peace, a peace not as the world gives, but a peace that only you can give. For, Father, your love within us is anchored in you, not by our circumstances. It's not qualified. It's not challenged by. Father, it is forever secured in you who does not lie and who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Father, I pray that you would be with us during this time, this very difficult time of uncertainty. And Father, I pray for the summer ahead. I pray that we would have opportunity to gather together and to celebrate summer together, Father. And until then, be with us in our homes and wherever we're watching. Thank you for loving us. May we know, receive, and share your love, loving the world as you have loved us. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again so much for spending this time with me. Take care, God bless. Love you all in Christ.